Hello, so this is going to be a video on the Soviet DP-23A decimeter reader or sort of charger, I guess. Now, this is quite an interesting thing. I knew nothing about it, couldn't find much info about this online, as it looks a bit like the DP, uh, DP-2, um, a very early Soviet ionization chamber radiation detector. I thought I'd buy it. It's a very similar case. It's got the same battery compartment on it and sort of stuff like that. Um, so it came from the Ukraine very quickly. The seller was very efficient. Knowing nothing about it, no idea if it would work or not, I bought it. And it's quite interesting because it seems this device itself doesn't actually have anything in it to detect radiation. What it seems to have is a decimeter charger port, which I believe is that one, and a decimeter reader port for the DKP50s, um, these. And what the idea is, is that basically you can charge these decimeter pens up using it. But also, more interestingly, you can put the decimeter pens in it and it will actually display how much radiation is on the decimeter pen. Now, that seems kind of a bit pointless because obviously these are designed so you can look through them at a light source and see how much, you know, the radiation you've absorbed that way. So I guess it's either just they thought it would be a cool function to have a charger that could also do that because obviously charger units on their own are far, far smaller than this thing. Or it might have been sort of part of a training sort of idea that, you know, you could more easily see it. Or it might have been if you were logging lots and lots of decimeter pens, um, you know, you could see, you know, higher doses. But the interesting thing is, obviously, if you look at a DKP50 into the light, it stops at 50 Ronken. This has the 50 Ronken mark there and goes further. So this might allow, um, essentially, somebody to see if a more lethal dose has been taken with a DKP50 absorbed, if that makes sense. So, this does power up, um, although it uses an obsolete type of battery. So rather than putting it on my power supply, which would be a bit awkward in this room, I'm going to attempt to power it using just a 9 volt battery. Hopefully it will be a close enough voltage that it doesn't blow anything up. And we'll have a look at maybe trying to use it, but if not, um, you know, I can at least demonstrate it. So. There's the bit where the light shines through, so you can charge the decimeter pen. There is no bulb in this for actually charging it, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but I've got an old NATO flashlight here, so what I can essentially do is turn this on, put it next to that port, and that means that I can actually, you know, do it that way. Because um, I found using room light or sunlight, it's not really bright enough. It's that sort of, you know, mirror facing upwards design. So, essentially, the insides are pretty interesting, but as I said, it's a DP2, but there's no ionization chamber at the bottom and no check source, control source. It's just literally a DP2, but where you would have the ionization chamber, there's some circuitry just for these bits. So if you open it up, that's where the old obsolete battery goes. Um, I'm not sure on the actual voltage of this. That's for turning, you know, the um, amplifier up or down, sort of the gain control, if you want to call it that. Positive and negative terminals in there that you'd obviously just attach a wire to, so we can crop clip to that. There's your display, there's your controls. I know the first setting's definitely off. I did try Google Translate on it, but some of the things didn't really make sense. And I did ask, I think, when I did a video on it initially um, on stream, if some of my Russian viewers could translate it, but I don't think any of them got back to me. But if they see this video, I'm sure they will. So there's off. I think one might be sort of circuit check or, you know, setting it to zero. Then the one that says DKP50A is definitely going to have something to do with the decimeters, and I think one is the charge setting. And I think these two knobs are for um, adjusting the sort of charge or the reading sort of zero. That, I believe, is the actual zero for getting the meter to sit on zero. But interestingly, zero is actually further left of the initial marking. So, let's try and power it on. So, we will attach the positive and the negative terminals, if I can get that into a good place. Right, there we go, so let me just wire this up. And then we will try and turn it on. Now obviously, as I said, this is not designed to run on a 9 volt, but um, I'm pretty sure it will do it to some extent. So we'll just put that closed. Obviously, I can't close it properly with those wires there, but if I turn it on, you can hear the transformer inside whining as it comes to life. And now let's see, can we get this... Um, so I think if I fiddle with this, it does actually adjust, or at least one of these, does adjust where the zero is. But maybe it's not on this setting. That's 
definitely getting higher wine, sort of that way. But again, if that's for sort of reading or whatever, that's not... Oh, there we go. I think it's powering up because the pitch is changing a bit. Or is that me? Yeah. Anyway, let's turn these to there. Right, let's try this setting. Right, that setting's gone off the chart, so let's... Reset that, if that one does that. No, nope. let's try that one. Needles flickering around a bit. What this setting does, I really don't know. But as you can see, or hopefully you can see, the needle is shooting across a bit there. Let's see if this does anything on this setting. Oh, that's flickering a bit. Oh, that's going down. Right, let's try the DKP50 setting, because that's what we obviously want to test. So, if I open both these ports up, I can have a look and see if um, I can do anything with it. So firstly, let's pop this in here and see if it tells us anything. The answer is no, but it's got no charge in this one yet anyway. So if I put it into the other port with the light, and then look through it, can I make the um, line appear on it? If I'm even doing the right thing here. And assuming all the electronics inside still work, I guess. Again, this is quite a fiddly instrument to do this sort of thing with. Unless I'm on the wrong setting. Let's try flicking to another setting. See if I have any more luck on any of the others. So let's try the first setting. We'll just go through them in order. So, needles jumping about a bit. But let's see. Again, this is a really awkward place for the light. Ah, so putting that in moves the needle, does it? Or is that just jumping about on its own? Ah, stop now. Right. I'll try the next setting. No joy there. Right, if I can't have any luck with this setting, what I'll try to do is charge up one of these pens on one of my other chargers and then see if we can at least get one of the other displays to change its number. But yeah, not speaking Russian and um, obviously not having a charged DKP50 and not knowing if any of this actually works, other than powering on. Um, you know, that's not very easy. So what I'm going to do is stop the video now. I'm going to charge this up and set it to zero Ronken, um, and we'll see then. Actually, I'll set it to about five Ronken, because then it should be somewhere noticeable on the chart, so we can see if it displays the number it should display. Right, annoyingly, I've figured out what's happened. With the DKP50, at least this one, the optics become misaligned, which sometimes happens with these decimeter. So basically, the little fibre is actually moving in the wrong direction. Uh, I can dismantle it and get that in the right place, but I don't really have time to do that now. So I've set one of these NATO ones um, to actually uh, basically give a reading. And I'm just going to wonder what happens if I pop it in here. So um, I, let's put it to the DKP50 setting, which might indeed be the setting I want it on. Let's pop that down if it fits. And oh no, I've been fooled by the um, fact that NATO decimeter pens are ever so slightly fatter than the Soviet ones. So, uh, I don't know if I can really demonstrate anything. Weirdly, the charging port, if that's this one, slightly wider. It fits in that one. But the other one, it doesn't. Which is kind of annoying. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Right. So, yeah, I can try popping that in there, but... Whether or not it will do anything, I don't know. Actually, I just had a thought. 
with this one, are you meant to set <coughs> the reading you want on there? Well, I know I'm probably using the wrong one to do that. Does this actually fully undo? I think that's just a zero under there, so I won't play with it. But yeah, there you go. So I'm afraid this video is probably not very informative because the DKP50 I was hoping to, you know, demonstrate with this seems a bit broken. And neto pen hit too fat to fit in the scimitar. But um, there you go. So it's an interesting thing, the DP23A. The actual purpose it serves, I'm not quite sure because I'm assuming if you're on the reading setting and you had a working decimeter pen, you could just have it sit in there and then if that was set to zero Ronken, I'm assuming if it starts detecting radiation, it would move the needle on there, but as I said, this seems quite a strangely over-elaborate thing for essentially a decimeter reader slash, you know, um, charger. So it might have some other functions, I'm just being really stupid and not sort of realising. But anyway, any of the people that speak Russian, um, if you're watching this video, see if you can come up with any ideas of what this actually did. Um, but as I said, it's interesting, and yep, just like the DP2, apparently you can run it off of, you know, batteries it's not really meant to run on. Uh, so let's disconnect that. So this has got that simple sort of style design of, you know, just connecting wires to a terminal, which I like. So yeah, and then it just has this that bolts down when, you know, the battery's in there or it's not in use to keep it, you know, from harm's way. So there you go, it's an interesting thing. As I said, I don't really understand the point of it. But I just saw it on Etsy and thought, why not buy it? Because it's an interesting looking thing. So essentially, a DP2's housing repurposed as a decimeter reader slash charger, I assume. But as I said, I might be completely wrong on that. But interesting bit of history. The guts inside it are actually quite interesting if you open it up. Um, because as I said, it's it's like a DP2, but without an ionization chamber and all a check source. Just some other bits of electronics in there. So, there you go. But a cool old piece of history regardless.